Hello, friends. We're going to give everybody about 30 seconds to get on here because I want to make sure that I know that y'all can hear me when I start speaking. So we're just going to give it a couple seconds while I hydrate. And get this party started. Okay. Hello, my friends. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to a live stream with a conversation, like a topic already in mind. Uh, primarily, primarily, oh, oh, what just happened? My my counter re, re, restarted counting. So now I don't know how long I've been live for. Cool. Um, we'll, we'll wait another couple seconds then because the counter was at 30 seconds and then it was not at 30 seconds. Then it went back to 14 seconds. So technology is being really, really kind to me today, apparently. Let me just close all these other windows so we can we can be sure that things are going the way they're supposed to be going. Hello, welcome. I am so glad that you are here. We have a topic to discuss today, primarily because I haven't filmed an actual video in like two weeks, a week. I don't, I don't know when, but for a good reason. I, I, I was, gonna, I was trying to say something else, and I was like, no, it's a good reason because y'all, I'm in what I am calling cocoon season, and I'm not even mad about it. So we're going to talk about it. Let's see who all is here. Um, Simba's joining us tonight. Fantastic. Gracie is right outside this door because she's mad that I locked her out. Um, hello, Lissa and Lori, Kathy, Grace, Lauren. I just got into it after refreshing a few times, and I just got the notification. When you first mentioned being quiet, I was like, you were? I hadn't even noticed. And that's so interesting because, like, what have, what have I been posting lately? I haven't been. I I really haven't been. And I did like an, an Instagram. One of my goals, was it for this month? I'm pretty sure it was for this month, was like an insta like an Instagram post every day. Cause how hard can it be for 30 days? And I did it for like four days. And then I was like, Instagram who? I'm barely like I open it and then I don't do anything with it. I don't want to create on it. I don't even want to browse it half the time. It's like one of those autopilot things. And I'm like, I really don't need to be doing this. Um haven't posted an actual YouTube video in like two weeks. Um, haven't filmed an actual YouTube video. I just, I started one. I started one Sunday afternoon and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a good old fashioned Sunday reset. And I filmed like three clips for it. And then I started getting all pms -y and just feeling tired. And it was after my mother-in-law had left and after a really wonderful, fabulous weekend. And I spent, no joke, and the, the Instagram post I actually did post was a picture of me with like this awesome like sunshine flare. No joke. I sat on the couch for an hour just playing my little Harry Potter game, but the windows were open and the sunlight was streaming in. So I just let the sun beat down on me and the, the spring breeze, it was 70 degrees outside, let that breeze roll in. And I just sat in the quiet. My husband was upstairs playing a video game also quietly. And so it was just quiet. And I just sat in the quiet and I was like, this, this is pretty much the epitome of the season I currently feel like I am in and which is why I've started calling it my cocoon season. Um, and it's just, it's felt, it, it's interesting because as an online content creator and business owner, it feels wrong. It feels wrong. And it feels almost dirty to be like, I'm just not, I'm not posting things right now. I'm just not. Um, the only thing I'm actively doing is working on my course. And I filmed content for that today and I've been editing it and it's, it's great stuff. It's literally the only thing I'm focused on doing right now. Um, and so there's been a lot of quiet time and just downtime and it's good. It's good, y'all. So good. Um, admittedly, I haven't watched any of your last four videos. I'm behind and I have no excuse. See, you're not even paying attention to if I'm posting content or not. Um, sometimes I miss my virtual teaching days. I long for quiet time. Yeah. Yeah. And I am, it, it's, it's interesting. Well, first of all, hang on. Do y'all have any highs and lows you want to share with me? Um, before we get into this conversation, because this is the conversation that I wanted to have today. Um, 
do you have highs and lows? For those of you that might be watching later or are new, highs and lows is where the community has the opportunity to share what's going on with them by sharing their high from the last week, their highlight moment, no celebration is too small, or and or their low if you want to share kind of like what was the, the moment of the week. And then if you want to talk about your wellness wins, I would love to hear about that and share the thing that you are working on. I will go ahead and get started with my weekend we had the most perfect weather this weekend. Sunny, 75. My mother-in-law was in town. We went to Crumble Cookies not once, but twice. I went to a movie theater. I'm pretty sure for the first time since the pandemic. I'm pretty sure. Um, I went to a movie theater. We went to the Arboretum for the first time this year. There wasn't a whole lot to see because spring has just started to spring. So like all the trees were still bare. So we took my mother-in-law and we're like, imagine, imagine all of this with leaves and imagine all of these flowers in bloom because they will be here soon. But it got her excited enough to actually be willing to come back in the fall, which we've been trying to get them to do since 2019. Um, so great question, Lauren. We saw, it was my mother-in-law and I, and she dragged me to this movie. It's called Someone Like You. And it was like a limited run thing. I don't know if it's still playing in some places, but it is it is based off of a Karen Kingsbury novel. And Karen Kingsbury is a Christian author who my mother-in-law loves to read and actually knows personally now. The director of this movie also directs my nephew in... Um, theater stuff in the Nashville area and they're all from the Nashville area. And so like she has pictures with Karen Kingsbury and whatever. And this is the first book of hers that they have fronted the cost for they being the Karen Kingsbury people and fundraising and whatever. And I didn't know what I was getting into because my mother-in-law did a terrible job of explaining it. She's like, it has to do with embryo transfers. And I thought I was going to go in and like watch an infertility journey or something like that. Um, not what it was at all. It was actually a great romance story and it was very good and the acting was great and I had a good time. It was nice. It was like a Hallmark movie, but not quite as cheesy, like a little bit heavy. I don't know. It was, it was good. It was, it was very good. I liked it very, very much. Um, so it was called Someone Like You. I don't know if it's still in theaters. You'd have to Google it, but it was very cute. Um, so the weekend was perfect. It really was perfect. Um, Introduced her to crumble cookies, discovered that the cookie dough crumble cookie is like bonkers delicious. Accidentally, like my new favorite cookie. So good. I tried like we brought home like one of each flavor and then like we're sampling. So I'm taking like little slivers of each one. And then before I ran upstairs to do my membership chat. On Thursday, I grabbed the little piece of the cookie dough one because I hadn't tried it yet. And I literally stopped dead in my tracks and I was like, this is freaking delicious. Like, it's so good. So the next time that the cookie dough cookie is there, get you some because it was awesome. So the weekend was just lovely, perfect, glorious. Um, the, oh, oh, and I guess so many things to share. My low is that I had to go and get my blood redrawn yesterday. It's not that I had to go get my blood redrawn. My doctor ordered more tests with the whole liver thing, right? I got stuck five times. Five. I, I walked in. I was convinced. I was convinced that this was going to be the day that I only got stuck once because I knew exactly what to say to the phlebotomist. And I was like, look, you got to take it from my hands. Don't even try to take it from my arms. And last time, the thing that was successful was the manual syringe. And the lady, bless her, listened to every word I said. And she goes, okay, we'll do it in the hands. She got the manual syringe. She found a vein in this hand, which is where we got started last time. And literally, I watched, I watched her pull the thing and nothing came, nothing. It was like, there was no blood in my veins. I was like, are you kidding? And so long story short, I ended up with the, the tech in the back coming out to stick me and they took my blood from right here. This is where it all came from five times. It was awful, but the wellness win the wellness win is my liver enzymes got tested again, and they're all almost back to normal. They're almost back to normal, which means the thing that like was causing my doctor to have order all of these tests, do all of these things, I think is non-issue. 
which is really good. She's still making me go to get an MRI. Um, she told me that today because of gallstones and whatnot, just to make sure. But my numbers that were quite high were uh, bumped down from to one above normal and two above normal. So one dropped by like 130 points and one cut in half. I was like, so this is your lesson, my friends. Um, if you take an iron supplement just for funsies, it's going to whack out your liver enzymes. And listen, I mentioned something earlier about ashwagandha. I was taking ashwagandha on and off at the same time as well. Those two things apparently can affect your liver enzymes. Use with caution and tell your doctor if you're getting any blood work done, if you're taking those things, because it will affect your numbers. So there's that. That was my wellness win. Um, another wellness win is this shirt is new. It's from my shopping experience with my husband. And um, I swear to you, I went into the garbage and looked up looked up the uh, the tag to make sure we didn't buy it in a size larger because when I tried the sister shirt of this, same shirt, different pattern on in a store, it was not as flattering as this one was. And I put this on today and I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did I magically lose three inches on my waist? What is going on? I don't understand. Um, and so that felt really nice. That felt really nice. So that was my wellness win. And my working on, well, my working on is basically what we're going to talk about today. Okay. Um, so that's, that's where we're at with that. Um, list as high as the barista at Starbucks yesterday. Let me pick the music they played. The low, same as usual, work and home stuff. Um, my win is I went on a walk after work, even though it was a bit painful and brain Brianna was able to talk me off of a minor ledge a few times this morning. I love when y'all hear my voice in the back of your heads. It makes me so happy to know that I'm having enough of an impact and saying things that are worth hanging on to so much so that you hear my voice and you're like, don't do that or do that or it, whatever it is I'm saying to you. I don't know what I'm saying to y'all, but y'all tell me you start to hear my voice in the back of your head and I'm kind of here for it. I'm not going to lie. Um, working on trying to pick no glasses out because my prescription didn't change. I love that color. Why? Thank you. On the camera, the, I'm, I'm like, I'm looking at what I look like on YouTube right now. This color is bright on camera. Like it doesn't look this bright in real life. I don't feel like it does, but whatever the camera is doing is just making it pop a little bit more. And it's fabulous. Um, Grace's win is I finished module one of my course and did a lot of self-reflection. Good. Oh, good. Hi, is it's finally spring weather and I got to wear some of the new tops, my low, the usual, not enough sleep. Um, working on daily journaling and reading. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, thank you for going through the course and being a part of the course. I'm so, so excited. And don't worry, the stuff I filmed today is going to get y'all doing a lot more self-reflection. Um, uh, cause we're going to be talking about reframing control and that's who, who boy, I was like, Oh, I'm bringing up some pretty good points here. <laughs> I'm going, um, Lori says my low was major hip issues, which involves sciatica missed work yesterday. Oh no. My high is that tonight. It's a lot better but wanting to scream, oh, I'm so sorry that that's bothering you. That's, it is always hard when you're in pain. As somebody who's actively, um, randomly in pain a lot more than usual lately, it really sucks when you're in pain. Um, I actually went through and I bought a couple extra. I've learned from my ankle problems, compression helps. Compression helps the ankle pain. So today I didn't wear anything and I actually feel pretty good. But I actually found like comp ankle compression socks, not like knee high ones, but because I'm sitting here trying to figure out I'm like, how am I supposed to be active when I need compression? And I found on Amazon, you can find literally anything on Amazon, y'all, anything. I'm like, I need insert specific thing here and you can find it on Amazon. I kid you not. So I'm literally like, I need ankle compression socks and boom. I found three pairs that in like pretty colors that have ankle compression and arch compression built right into them. And I wore them the other day and it felt so much better. I was so thankful. Um, on camera, that color would work for me. Simba's not high is that he had chicken for dinner. <laughs> oh, that you had chicken for dinner. I, I saw the picture you posted in Discord and I almost commented, well, that was really mean to just like put that right in front of his face. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, Gracie loses her mind around chicken. She absolutely loses her mind. Linda's high. Survived an appointment yesterday with a new gyno after the doctor I've seen for over 30 years retired. Oh, that's always so hard, especially when it's your gynecologist. 
Um, low. I used to be five seven. I found out yesterday I'm only five five. I'm shrunk. Oh no. Oh no. Um, I'm only five three, and I know one day I'll shrink down to four eleven, like both of my grandmas. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Can you can you shrink down that much, Grace? That's like four inches. Does that, I mean, I guess it does. As I sit and like move my body around and I realize, oh, you're slouching. Would you stand up straight, please, and engage your back muscles? Big difference. There's a big difference just in that. And so I think that is how we end up shrinking is we end up doing a lot of this. We do a lot of this and we literally just end up shrinking, right? So anyway, anyway, thank you for sharing your highs and your lows and your wins and all of the things with me. I love, love, love hearing about them. So let's chat. Also, if you guys have any questions about whatever, please feel free to pop them in the chat. We'll keep this conversation going. But I did want to address the my absence, for lack of a better term, not to address the absence, but to tell you just what's been going on. And I was going to sit down and do a, like a sit down video, but my desire to film sit down videos has been null. And I was like, no, this would actually be just a great conversation on the live stream. So that's what I want to talk about tonight. Um, I had frozen Brussels and carrots. I air fried both, tossed them in honey, red pepper flakes. Oh my goodness. I had leftover uh, Brussels sprouts for my dinner last night. Y'all, last night, I literally ate Brussels, Brussels sprouts for dinner. We went out to dinner with my small group just to get together. And we went to a restaurant that I, like, the thing that I daydream about from this restaurant is not a dessert. It's not a particular dish or like meal. It's literally their Brussels sprouts. Their crispy Brussels sprouts are a thing of God's creation. They're so good. And I Aunt Flo showed up today, like with vengeance. I spent my entire healthy meeting with a TENS unit attached to my lower abdomen to help the pain. Um, so like PMS and everything was rough this month. So last night, I'm just, I'm feeling terrible. It was energy drain city. There was not a, there was not an amount of coffee in the world that could help me. My hormones were, or my hormones were whacked out. I had five, ah, it still hurts. It luckily it hurts less today than it did yesterday, but like my, I got stuck five times yesterday. Like it was a brutal day yesterday. And so my husband, as he's reintroducing foods into his life, figuring out what the heck he can and can't eat, whatever. He's like, well, will you split? We usually get brisket by the, the half pound and we split it and we, you know, and brisket's a pretty fatty meat. Right. Um, and he's talking to me about it multiple times. He's like, what do you think you're going to get tonight? Blah, blah. And I'm like, I like, this is intuitive eating at its finest, really my, in my brain and my belly, like nothing sounded good. Nothing except these Brussels sprouts. And I got, I was getting so annoyed by him asking me, what are you going to get tonight? Cause he was trying to figure out what he was going to order. And if you could bum off me or we could split or whatever. And I was just getting so I'm like, let me just decide when I get there. Let me decide when I get there. And so I stared and I stared and stared at the menu. And I'm like, well, I know I'm getting the Brussels sprouts. I know I'm getting those. And so I ordered the Brussels sprouts. And then I ended up, nothing sounded good. So I ordered a salad with steak in it. It had like beans and tortilla chips. It was like a good Southwestern style salad with some of their meat on it, right? Well... All of the other food showed up, including my Brussels sprouts, and my salad order never got put in. So the guy was like, I'm sorry, the salad is coming now, whatever. And I was like, it's fine, whatever. They put the pot, the pile of Brussels sprouts in front of me, and I was elated. And I grabbed my fork, and I just happily, joyfully, not at all upset that my salad was not not in existence, eating my Brussels sprouts. And I ate my Brussels sprouts until my body went you don't want any more Brussels sprouts, put the fork down. And I put the fork down and that was my dinner. My salad showed up and I was like, can you please bring me a box? Cause I'm taking this thing home. I ate my, ate my fellow Brussels sprouts and I was so happy. <laughs> I was so happy. That's all I ate last night for dinner was Brussels sprouts and the joy, the joy that I felt. Um, so sometimes, sometimes you just eat Brussels sprouts for dinner and that's okay. That's okay. Um, I ended up barely eating any chicken rice, rice lentils. I just wanted the vegetables. Um, this afternoon's meeting, after this afternoon's meeting, you got me craving crispy, crispy Brussels sprouts. My gosh, they're one of my favorite things. They really are. As long as they're done well. And the crispier, the better. 
these have like burnt bits that come off that end up drenched in the sauce. Oh my gosh. I'm I'm getting excited just thinking about them. And I literally just ate them before I came up here. Um, according to my doctor, I'm only 5'1 now. Pre-kids, I was 5'4. My middle daughter, who has Turner syndrome, was on growth hormones for about 13 years and got to 5'2 and is now taller than me. Huh. What do you think inspired me to make Brussels sprouts at dinner? I raved about the Brussels sprouts to anybody who would listen today. I love them. Anyway, Brussels sprouts aside, let's talk about my cocoon era. Oh, that's what I should have called it. My cocoon era, because, you know, era and Taylor Swift and all of that. But so here's here's what's been going on. And I don't think I don't think it's an accident that this happened. It's never an accident. It's like it's the Holy Spirit, I swear. Um, it's I don't think it's an accident that when I started leaning into this softer life, feminine energy stuff, all of a sudden my desire to go, 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 diminished, poof, gone. And not in a bad way. Let me be very clear. It's not like I'm not doing anything. I'm just doing a lot of things that y'all don't see. <laughs> that's that's really what it is. I am spending time in the morning reading gloriously without like a time limit on it. I just get to sit and I read and I'm reading super great books. I'm currently in the middle of Captivating, which is a book on biblical femininity, and I'm loving it eating it all up, taking it all in, getting truly inspired. And I've had some moments that have made me go, huh? Like even just today, a big one that made me go, oh, okay. Um, So like I'm having a great time learning and reading and doing things around the house and baking and all, all of the other things, hanging out with my husband and watching Grey's Anatomy. Yes, I'll admit it. My iPad is sitting right here next to me because while I was getting this set up, I was working on an episode of Grey's Anatomy. I'm obsessed. It's a problem. Don't know what to do about that. Um, but I'm loving every second of it. <laughs> Truly, I'm loving every second of it. But I've been doing things. I cleaned my office. I've been creating my course, like I've been saying, which takes like... Um, like outlining and actually like I it's some with YouTube creation, there's sometimes I come up with like a title or a subject and then I just sit down and go with this. Like today, as I was get gearing up to get things completed and filmed and get inspiration and information, I actually sat down with the intuitive eating workbook and worked through a chapter of the workbook in preparation for filming the content and getting my thoughts on straight and making sure I knew what I wanted to say. What was relevant to the to the module versus what should be said later, things of that nature. And so I'm doing things. I'm going outside. I'm playing with Gracie and like trying to actually bond with her instead of just get annoyed with whenever she pesters me to eat. Um, we're hanging out with our friends, um, meeting up after church at the coffee shop that's in our church and just chilling for a little bit and socializing and having a great time and laughing and it's all so good. And it all is taking place offline. And so it puts me in this rock and a hard place. Like I'm in between this rock and a hard place, right? Because on the one hand, I'm a business owner that has her entire business online. If I don't create, if I don't actively pursue, there's no income coming in or minimal income coming in. I get some passive income from like, you know, my IUD video from like eight years ago. Don't know how that one is so popular. It's literally like my most popular video on my channel. I'm not kidding. <laughs> not kidding. It's crazy, crazy to me. Um, so on the one hand, there's that. But then on the other hand, I'm sitting here going, but this just feels right right now. And it's the, this just feels right that is allowing me to give myself the grace and approach everything like I've been approaching with food more intuitively. And my intuition isn't screaming, go, 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 go right now. My intuition is screaming back off a little bit because this is not what's important right now. And maybe, you know, one could argue that what caused this 
could be the leaning into the feminine energy in the softer life. One could argue that it's burnout from the fact that we hit the ground running in 2024 with a whole bunch of health issues and the emotional stress of me potentially having health issues of my own that are turning out, praise God, to not be an issue. MRI still pending. Um, but in so like it could be all of that that just kind of makes me want to... But there was something that felt very affirming in that hour that I spent on the couch on Sunday, taking in the nothingness, taking in the quiet, taking in the beauty of the sun. Like I was literally just overwhelmed with joy for how beautiful it was all weekend. We haven't had quite as beautiful of a day ever since. It literally rained and like thunderstormed and poured rain all day yesterday. It was so gray outside. You would have sworn it was 9 p.m. Um, it was crazy. But how wonderful to have that weekend. And it was just me sitting there. And what would like, let me pull up the Instagram post that I actually wrote because it felt right. Why do I have 17 text messages? I didn't have 17 text messages when I started this live stream. What the heck is going on? Um, here's what I said. Here's what I said. I've been in a cocoon season, feeling less of a desire to create content and more of a desire to just be. I'm still doing plenty, cleaning, reading, cooking, moving my body. Oh, yes, I'm doing moving my body. I'm downstairs on the elliptical with the exception of today and exception of the weekend almost every day. Like even yesterday, I managed to get myself on the elliptical for 20 minutes, even though I felt like utter trash yesterday. So like I'm moving my body, um, hanging out with friends. I just am feeling this need to step back and it's okay. It's easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of everyday life. We often feel like we always need we need to always be doing something or achieving something. And if we're not, we can feel guilty or like we're not doing enough. But sometimes the most important thing we can do is just be still. Our souls need rest just as much as our bodies do. I don't think this I don't think it's an accident that this is the mood I'm in when I decided to lean more into feminine energy and a softer life. It's important that we honor the different seasons of our lives, and sometimes that means taking a step back and slowing down. By doing so, we can tap into our intuition, creativity, and inner wisdom. Yesterday, I sat on the couch in front of the open window with the most perfect breeze coming in, the most beautiful weekend of the year so far, and let the wind and sun hit my face. It was quiet and relaxing and so energizing for the soul. That's the space I'm in energizing my soul. If you're feeling the same, I encourage you to lean into it. This time can be so vital for our well-being. Let yourself be still. Let yourself be quiet. Let yourself just be. Trust that you are exactly where you need to be in this moment. Trust that when the time is right, you'll emerge from your cocoon with wings ready to fly. You've got this. Um, that's so how I, like those words is so how I'm feeling. And when you sit and when you can be still, you tap into that soulful rejuvenation that you just can't find when you're so focused on other things. When you're so focused on the numbers and the deadlines and the this and the that and the other thing. And it's, it's a seasonal type of living, right? So what I anticipate is going to happen is this is a season that I'm going to lean into for a period of time. And we're going to get to that. Um, and then when I feel, when the spirit so moves me, the spirit has moved me to slow down. The spirit will move me to pick back up. It's called taking inspired action. When the inspiration comes, that's when you run with the inspiration. And what will come of it? I have no idea. I don't know. I'm living in a big space of I have no freaking clue right now. Um, but I'm not mad about it. And I'm not worried about it. I'm very, very much at peace about it. And the things that I want to do during this time are to be able to take in the beauty of spring. Like, I've never truly appreciated spring until I've lived in Minnesota. And spring is one of those seasons where, oh, my phone's not on silent. If you don't pay attention, 
it happens. And it's over like that. Like the thing that is the most beautiful about spring, the flowers on the trees instead of the leaves, you blink and it's over. And so I want to be able to take that in, go to the arb, walk outside. Um, spend time. And this is, this is a critical one. This is a critical one. And my spiritual girlies will understand, get, spend this time being still and getting to know God. And the book captivating is really one of the things I should have linked it down below, um, is one of the things that's really encouraging me to do this because it talks about feminine, uh, femininity and like, it doesn't say exclu- explicitly feminine energy, but it's talking about feminine energy in such a way that makes me want to make sure that I am engaging with God in a very specific way and a very intentional way. The other day, we, uh, we, the girls in my small group, one of the girls, this was a Saturday. My husband and I were at a Lego convention, nerding out like the nerds that we are. And I get a text message from one of the girls to just the girls talking about prayer. Like on a Saturday morning, she talks about her struggles with prayer with us. And so we're all, my husband and I are off screwing around with Legos and stuff. And we're all, and and we're having this serious conversation about prayer. And I got real honest about it. And I was like, you know, and and like, I'm not, I'm obviously not going to get into what she was talking about specifically, but, um, just in like feeling overwhelmed with prayer. And one of the things I said was, you know, it feels like sometimes prayer can be too formal. Um, one of my favorite places, and, and she feels like she can't focus on prayer because there's a lot going on in life. There's a lot going on in life. And I was like, you know, one of the places that I get some of my best, my my quality time with God just conversing, honestly, is in the shower. In the shower. Why? It's quiet in there except for the rushing water. There's not a whole lot to focus on except cleaning yourself, right? And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I like to just sit and feel the hot water on my body. And it's just like, it's a very relaxing thing and you're upright. And there's been like studies and stuff that show like when you're upright, ideas and things and inspiration tends to hit you more when you're like out walking or when you're in the shower or when you're driving because your posture is better and things of that nature. Um, So for me, and I actually think I heard about like my sister-in-law, I think mentioned something about praying in the shower. And so I think a handful of years ago, the, the seed was planted from her and I took it. And so being in the shower is one of my favorite places to to pray because outside of the running water and and me dropping things on the floor, it's pretty quiet. Um, To which three of the other girls responded, oh, I pray all the time in the shower too. And I was like, I thought it was only me. I thought that I was the only one that was like, you know where my best prayer time is? When I'm soaking wet and I have conditioner in my hair and I'm just sitting there waiting for the mask. No, everyone's like, I pray in the shower too. It's a great place to pray. I like to spend a lot of time in there. Um, so interesting, so interesting. And so it's like, even that conversation was like, just spend more time, more time in the quiet, more time, be still more time connecting with God, more time connecting with nature and seeing what that causes to happen. Because it's not that there's nothing to be done here. It's not that I want to sit and do nothing. My husband used to joke, you know, what are you doing? Sit at home eating bonbons all day. That's like his idea of like the lazy housewife is sitting at home eating bonbons. And um, it's not like that's what I want to be doing. Yes, there's rest. Yes, there's quiet. But there is personal development and spiritual development and emotional development and even physical development because I have been much more intentional about my movement lately than I have been in a long time. And that feels really good. And it's just such an interesting space to be in, truly. I'm going to check the comments for a second. It's the YouTube, it's the video YouTube pushes to me the most, even though it's least relevant to me. It's because you haven't watched it yet. Um, Allison, hello. Sometimes I think we just need to be still and rest. There's so much going on that it is a relief to just be. It really is. It is like this this calm, this spiritual calm that just kind of washes over me and just allows me to be able to think creatively and jot down notes of like, oh, I had this idea for a vlog. I don't want to film it right now, but I have an idea for it. Or, oh, this would be a great point for me to make in my course, you know, and it just comes to me. But if I'm so busy worrying about all of the stuff that I see on the screen, 
it doesn't open the opportunity for any of that to come in. Have you ever experienced that? How like when you start to let things go is when things actually start to come to you. There's a reason for that. There's nothing like a lazy Saturday or Sunday, a day of being still peaceful. It's so restorative. It is. And another thing I've been doing, I've been waking up early, which I haven't been liking, but it's also because I'm like, I what I don't remember what day it was, but there was one day it was like 9 50 or something. And I'm like, I think I'm going to go get ready for bed. And I crawled my sorry button to bed just after 10 o'clock. And I was like, you go do, if you want to, you know, go out there, spend a little time out there. That's fine. I'm just going to be in here nice and toasty in my bed. And my aura ring keeps getting mad at me because my sleep latency, which is how long it takes you to fall asleep has been like three minutes. And that's too quick. They're like, the the ring seems to believe that if you fall asleep that quickly, you're way too overtired. So I'm either way too overtired or I'm just so like, like I'm just, that's just how I'm built. It's like, let's fall asleep and let's get rest. And it's a beautiful thing to be able to just wake up and actually feel rested. Um, the post resonated with me so much when I read that yesterday. I'm so glad, Linda. I'm so glad that that resonated with you. Um, and you're not the only one to say that. A lot of people messaged me and were like, wow, the timing on this post or, oh, I really needed to hear this today. And what that tells me is we are in an area, we are in a time, I'm in a community and y'all are seeing my content. This is what is needed right now. We're all so busy with the hustle and bustle. And let me be clear. I'm not saying shirk on your work duties or shirk on your parenting duties. I understand that I'm living a very privileged life where I can actually take a step back and not have it negatively impact me in any way. I understand that. Um, But within the realm of your situation, you could stand to hear this too. It's something that we, especially we as women, and I don't know where Andy is today, but I'm (laughs) going to assume everyone else on here is a woman until told otherwise. Um, We as women need to remember that this, this is part of the feminine energy. This is part of it. Being able to just let it be still and be given room to create be given room to nurture, even if it's nurturing of yourself, right? Um, it's all it's all part of it. And when you start to embrace and feel these things and do these things, you start to feel in a different kind of way. And that's really like kind of what I'm grappling after. Because at the same time, like I said, I've been sitting here going, I'm not, I haven't posted a video in how long? Like other outside of live streams. And it's, it's an interesting thing because like normally in the past, because I, I, I pull back on content about once or twice a year, every year, but this is the first time it doesn't send me into a, <gasps> but I'm not doing enough. And I don't, I don't actually feel that way this time, which shows growth, by the way, shows growth. Um, I just double checked the link to in Discord to see if you have a link for captivating, but I can only share a generic link for mine. I don't have one of yours that I can toss in here. Yeah, I can I can grab it. Um, because y'all, it is good. It is so good. And if you have um Kindle Unlimited, which I do. Oh, wait, let me make sure I'm not lying to you. I mean, I can't be lying to you. I'm reading it on Kindle Unlimited. It is on Kindle Unlimited, and it is worth a month of Kindle Unlimited, in my opinion. Um, it's so, so, so good. It's so good that I have a friend of mine from small group gave me the, um, now I have 24 text messages. What is going on? Um, the, a friend of mine gave me, they have the, the masculine com- companion to it called Bra- wild at heart. So I have that and I'm going to read that next just to get the masculine perspective on the same stuff, or I guess the companion stuff, because it's probably not going to be exactly the same from this book. Um, it's so good. I have, I haven't watched any recent videos, but I have watched the IUD videos and it's still recommending it to you. That's silly. That's silly. It's like, I get really annoyed when I get sponsored ads from stuff I've already purchased. Like I've already given you my money. Leave me the heck alone. Like there's no, well, there is a button. You can't actually say already purchased on some things. Um, But, oh man, I'm just like, why, you know everything else about me, creepy big brother on the internet. Why don't you know when I purchased the product? 
because you should. You probably do. You just want to apply it to your ad stuff. Um, Shannon, hello. Welcome. So that is essentially where I've been at with my cocoon era, my cocoon season, Um, a season of rest, a season of rejuvenation, a season of just unplugging, essentially. Um, And it's not that I'm tech free, but it's like I said, I open Instagram and I'm like, why am I even on here? And then I go on to Facebook. Like I still haven't broken the cycle of like, let me check the social medias because maybe something will be different. But like even the Discord channel for my membership has been quiet lately. And to be clear, for those of you that are here, I'm not mad about it. I'm not. Um, But it just tells me that this is a season where we as a community, as a group, as a society, are looking for something beyond what's available on the internet. And I actually think that's a beautiful thing. Speaking as somebody who has a business on the internet. So does anybody have any questions? Seriously, any questions at all about it? Um, I'm an open book about it. Maybe a question that you ask might inspire me to think of something I haven't thought of before. Um, But I wanted to share this with you. I wanted to share this with you. So if you have questions about that, let me know. If you don't have questions, if you have a question, any question in particular, because we still have 20 minutes to kill um, and I would like to spend it with you, please ask away. We can start a completely different topic if you so desire. I am open. Um, But one thing I do want to say before I forget is with that being said, there will be no live streams in the month of May. I am taking the month of May off of live streaming. And actually next week, just so y'all know, and I'm going to change it in the Google calendar right now, next week will be an afternoon live stream, not an evening live stream. My evening is going to be devoted to my course members and we're going to have our first group coaching. Um, So the live stream, I'm about to bump it up, boop, 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 will be at 3 p.m. Central time next week. But then there will be no live streams for the entirety of the month of May. What I have not decided is what content that is not live is going to look like. I can't decide if I want to batch content. I can't decide if I want to just try, you know, try to get one video out a week, two videos out a week. I can't decide if I want to be like, you know what, sabbatical. (laughs) I really can't decide. I haven't, I haven't been moved in one way or another, but May is often the, um, it's kind of related, I swear. I often do No Way May in May because it sounds pretty. No Way May. And it is where I abstain from something that I normally do regularly with the full intention of picking it back up in June. Like, just take a month off because that's fine. Now, I just did the No no Way scale thing for Lent. So I'm probably not going to actually do No Way May this year because I might hop on the scale a couple of times. And it doesn't, it you know, some days I do and some days I don't. There's really no rhyme or reason to how I do it at all um, in terms of the weighing of myself right now. But um, May tends to be the month that I abstain from something. And so that something might just be taking a step back and just allowing myself to be less stressed and embrace a season of spring. Maybe that's what it's supposed to be. I don't know. I really don't know. But I, because I love y'all, I wanted to share with y'all about what's going on with me, with what's going on in my head, what's going on in my life. And because I feel like you guys deserve to know. You guys deserve to know. Um, I can tell that you look more relaxed. That is actually such a wonderful compliment, Shannon. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Um, It's also very interesting. Like, again, what was my, one of my wins today was that this shirt that I'm 98% sure is the same fabric and the same cut as the other shirt that I purchased that did not feel quite as flattering as this shirt does today. And I am in the height of, I am, I am, so hormonally bloated this month. I can feel it. And I haven't felt good in a couple of days. Um, and it's just hormones and I know that. So now I can breathe and be like, okay, it'll be over in two days. So just chillax. Um, but like body stuff that was there two weeks ago doesn't appear to be there anymore. 
And um, my husband was looking through pictures the other day and he pulled up a picture from like last summer or something, or maybe it was even like January. I can't remember when it was, maybe the holidays. And he looked at it and he goes, intuitive eating has been really good to you. And I was like, I know, I know it has, but like, it's really validating to hear someone else say it, to pull up a picture and be like, you look different. You look different. Um, Emma, to be clear, my weight hasn't changed. The number on the scale has not changed. Okay. Um, and so it's a really interesting thing. So being told that I look more relaxed, like that, that feels huge to me, really, because one cannot live on adrenaline and stress and others' expectations alone, you know? Um, so it's just, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at right now. I've got my handful of one-on-one -on -one coaching clients who I love coaching. And that's really, I, I should mention, I have energy going over there as well. <laughs> but um, I mean, at this point in time, it often feels like like the one-on-one -on -one coaching and the YouTube videos aren't necessarily related right now um, like they used to be. And that's okay. That's okay. But I've got my handful of clients and we're all working on our goals and I'm helping people with um, action items and goals and all sorts of things. And yes, yeah, some healthy habits and stuff as well that hasn't gone away. My macro coaching has, but the, the wellness intention behind all of it hasn't, but I have that and I have my course that I'm creating and it's just good. It's just good. I'm making it, I'm definitely making an effort to do that. Live on adrenaline stress and the expectations of others. You're making, you're making an effort to do that. Yeah. That's not going to, you're going to crash and burn. You're going to crash and burn. And there is a time, there's a time, an appropriate time to have some deadlines and to have some adrenaline and to have that. Like it's obviously it's necessary. Whenever it is, I choose to be like, okay, you know, let's go back full force. I'm going to be once again on more of a deadline. Well, maybe not. Maybe I decided to just change everything up. Who the heck knows? We'll see what comes to me, what comes to me during this time. But um, in general, like there's a time, like the course, there's a time to focus. And I tell myself that as I'm doing the course and stuff too. Look, sit down, do the work, have put on your little masculine energy hat for the day and do the work. And then you don't have to do it the rest of the week. And then you can focus on the editing. Like the editing is like the much more free flowy part. Um, and, you know, it's like, and it's, there's a time and a place, but it can't be constant. And that at least, at least, and I know somebody out there watching is going to be like, well, that's not the case for me. More power to you, friend. More power to you. This channel is about my life experience. And what I am understanding, what I am beginning to understand about myself is that for, you know how like for every action, there is an equal, equal and opposite reaction. For me, it's for every action, for every, for every ounce of oomph, there needs to be an ounce of chill. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, there are some people that are wired to go, 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 go. And I thought that I was one of those people that could go, 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 go. Because, and I'm going to flash on back almost 20 years not quite 20 years, 15 years, to college. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. I freaking thrived in college. Thrived, I tell you. Um, I was up early every single day except on the weekends. And I was rehearsing. I was in three dance classes a week, two voice lessons a week, taking my liberal arts classes, my science labs, my math classes um, in theater most of the time acting, this, that, the other thing, and always had time for dinner with friends and the whole, like, I was just, I was able to get up and be at the gym at 5.30 in the morning to work out. Like, I was thriving. And so I always took that to be, I'm somebody who can thrive on a busy schedule. I'm somebody who can blah, 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 blah. And so I took that to believe that that was true about myself. And then I would sit there and get angry and frustrated every single time that I burnt out. Every single time, which you guys have seen me do many times over the years. You've seen it. You've witnessed it. Um, so then I got to thinking, why could I thrive in 
call it. It's not my age. It's not my health. It's not my weight. It's none of that. Um, Y'all, if we actually did the breakdown of what I spent my time doing and classified it as either the creative, nurturing, um, flowy, get to be myself and in a relaxed state of mind stuff versus the go, 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 have to do it, don't want to do it, like mm, my my regular classes and homework, didn't want to do any of that. If I could, I would spend all day in the music building making music. And oh, wait, I did spend most of my time doing that. I did. I got up and worked out because it made me feel good, because it made me function better at my dance classes. So I was in dance classes three days a week. That's three hours of working out where I was being creative and flowing and nurturing what I loved most. I had two voice lessons a week. I was in multiple choirs, always creating music, always doing things that did not fall on the this causes burnout end of the spectrum. But I spent 85% of my time doing stuff that was on the soul-filling side of the spectrum. And once I realized that, I went, oh, no wonder I thrived in college. Because it was all from this energy that that I belonged in. And there was never any collegiate burnout, ever. I did not burn out once in college. I got sick once in college. But I did not burn out. Um, And it was crazy. It was not without its hard times and its challenges. But I thrived there because it was the right energy for me. It was the right everything, right? And that's the, the kind of living that I need to get back into. And the cooking is creative. And the, the homemaking is very creative. And yes, yes. Creating content is also creative, but right now I need to unplug that to be able to replug it in. It's kind of like the the turn it off. Did you power it off and power it back on again? Right? Um, because right now my my instinct is to always be like, oh, look at the views of the video. Oh, how many comments are on the video? Oh, oh, and until I can unplug from that. And just be like, it don't, it don't matter. And I, I've been talking about it for a while, but I haven't been able to actually pull that plug. Um, I need to get back into the creative flow of it, um, which is good and great and wonderful, right? So I'm definitely crashing and burning. I'm just trying to get to a place where I have the freedom to let go. Yeah. And maybe, maybe what this is. So, so do you, do you, not just Lissa, but do you, friends that are watching, Do you feel convicted by any of this? Do you feel in your heart that any of this speaks to you? When you listen to me talk about, and you've been listening to me talk for almost an hour now, does any of this make you go, I need this for my soul too. I need to sit and be still. If yes, here's the thing. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You don't have to take a complete step back. You don't have to. You can find five minutes a day to start to intentionally be still. You can take advantage of the the first, the next, the next sunshiny day you have. And you can go outside and you can walk and be still. You can instead of scrolling social media and finding things that you will for sure without the shadow of a doubt because we all do it end up spending time comparing yourself to other individuals you can go out with your significant other you can sit on the couch i'm i have i'm having i'm already expressed my interest today i'm like when i'm done on my live stream which i also had to tell my tell my husband admittedly this is nothing against y'all but i went in he was sitting on the or laying on the bed in the uh in his office, just thinking, you know, just sitting there. And so I climbed into bed with him and I curled up and he's like, oh, are you cuddly today? I'm like, I just want to cuddle and I don't want to talk to the people. He's like, what do you mean? I don't want, you don't want to talk to people. I'm like, I have live stream tonight. And he goes, oh, why don't you cancel it? And I'm like, I'm not going to cancel it. 
but I am going to not do it in May. And he goes, I think that will be very good for you. That will just take some of the stress off of like having to show up because he knows that I'm very good at having to show up. I have not published a video on how long, but I show up every single week for y'all, don't I? Every single week for the less than 20 of you that are here, I show up because I'm an obliger. <laughs> because I'm an obliger. I said this in my healthy meeting earlier. You want to see the epitome. And I don't remember I told you this already. If I told you with, just shh, you're going to hear it again. Um, most obliger thing ever. Every single night, I set up the coffee maker, right? Every single night. Because my husband drinks coffee and I drink coffee. So I set up the coffee maker every night. Since my husband's been having his acid reflux issues, he hasn't been drinking regular coffee. Guess how often I set up the coffee maker at night for myself. I don't. I've done it twice since January. Twice. And last night was one of them because I realized as I was getting ready for bed, I'm like, why don't you do this for yourself? Why? Why does Eric have to be drinking coffee in order for me to set up the coffee pot? Why can't I set it up for myself? There's something in my wiring and I know it's about the obliger. You've heard me talk about being an obliger time and time and time again. But why is it so true? Why Why is it this like innately in my wiring to show up for other people and not show up for myself the same way? It takes no extra energy to do it for my husband than it does to do it for myself. But for some reason, because he's drinking the coffee too, I put it up, I, I set it up the night before. What is that about? not yelling at you. I'm yelling at me. What is that about? I don't know. I don't know. So the bottom line is I show up for y'all, right? I show up for y'all. So he looked at me and goes, that's going to be, that, that'll be good for you just to take the month off. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think convicted is the right word for what I feel. Oh, interesting. I'd be very curious to know what it is you do feel. Um, Allison says it resonates. Lauren says 100%. Um, yeah. So my challenge to you, friend, is what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Obviously, some of you can't just totally take a step back from all of your commitments. I understand that. But what? And one of my favorite things to um, coach and, and throw at my clients is, okay, you're, just, you're saying a lot about what you can't do. What can you do? Right? I don't like to live in the space of can't. So if you can't do the exact process that I am doing, fine. I don't expect you to. But what can you do? What can you do with this hour that we have just spent together and all I've told you about what I'm going to be doing and how I'm approaching it and most importantly, how it's making me feel, right? What are you going to do? What can you do to get a piece of it yourself? What can you do to enter a sort of your own cocoon era, if you will, so you can get that rest that you need in order to later re-engage or engage in a different way and become your butterfly, come out of your cocoon and be different, the same but different, um, because the rest the rest and the be still. That is where I advise you to start. Be still. Be quiet. And whether you are a Christian or not, I suggest be still. But in the Bible, it says be still. Be still and know. And I don't think it's an accident that when I sat there and was still for an hour the other day, I felt amazing. I felt amazing. Just because I've been still. In quiet. And I can't wait until my husband almost brought up my, my deck chair from the basement. It's not quite after our, our wonderful weekend, the temperatures got a little bit lower again. So it's like the low is 43. But I, one of my favorite things to do is to have coffee on my patio in the morning because usually, usually it's quiet. I mean, it's not silent. Let me be clear. It's not silent. We've got a crazy family of sparrows living somewhere nearby, and they sing the song of their people to the highest heavens every single morning at like 730. So it's not quiet, but it is still. It is peaceful. 
It is nature. And that is wonderful. Um, So maybe you have coffee on your patio and just sit in silence. Maybe instead of popping in a podcast because you have to listen to a stimulus every minute of every day, you decide to just go for a walk in the silence. But I think a really great place to start is to be still. I've already been working on this. I've been doing more reflection, praying, being outdoors, walking, and observing nature, which is so fulfilling for me. I always said I love that. And that's exactly where I'm at too. And that is a really, really great place to start. So that is my challenge for you this week, my friends, and in the coming weeks going forward. So that's that's what I have for you. It is eight o'clock. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so grateful that you listened to my plight, my story. Um, so as a reminder, I would love to do a walking meditation, praying in my local park this weekend. I love that idea. I love that idea. One of the most spiritual moments, and I can't remember all the details and I won't go into it right now, but when I was at a high school youth retreat, we went away for a weekend in like this beautiful nature area. And one of the most powerful things is we, our youth and pastor sent us all off on a prayer walk. And we had like this piece of paper, this little booklet that had information about like, like prompting and stuff. But like every single one of us came back from that, like so spiritually fulfilled. I remember we sat in silence afterwards, just like on the pier, watching the sunset. And it was just so powerful. There's something really, truly powerful about engaging in nature and being, spending time in the quiet and spending time with God. It's so good. So that's all I have for you today. Again, reminder that next week will be, the live stream will be at three o'clock in the afternoon. Did I just, yes, it is April. Great. Cool. Just checking. And then there will be no live streams in the month of May. So Thank you for your understanding as I navigate whatever this cocoon season is. I love you all. Take care and I'll talk to you later. Bye.